Okay, I will look through this game and uh, you had the black pieces here and uh, if I see a move that I can comment on then I will comment on it. So let's see what happened here. White played e4, you played knight f6, the Alekhine defense, e5, knight to d5, bishop c4, knight b6, bishop b3, d5, e takes d and passant, e takes d, knight f3, bishop g4, castle, knight to d7. Okay, this move is not a mistake, but it's not the most accurate move in the position. One of the most important opening principles is that you must get your king safe as quickly as possible. And this knight move doesn't help you get your king safe quickly. I would have recommended in this position that you rather play bishop to e7 with the idea to castle on the next move. Now maybe you think the difference is not so big, but let me show you what could have happened. After knight to d7, if white now plays rook e1 check, you are pretty much forced to play bishop to e7, blocking the check, and now white can play queen to e2, adding pressure on this bishop. The point is you can't castle, else he takes the bishop and you lose a piece. So the problem you have to deal with here is how are you going to castle, how are you going to make your king safe. Now this is not the type of pressure you want right in the opening stage already. So that's why I would have recommended that you play bishop e7 earlier instead of that knight to d7 move. Alright, so knight, you played knight to d7, h3, bishop h5, Pawn to d3, knight e5. Under normal circumstances this is a very good idea because you're adding pressure on the knight. However, white actually has a brilliant tactic here that he didn't see. He could play knight takes knight. And the point is you can't take the queen because there's a checkmate here. Bishop takes f7, king e7, bishop to g5 is a very nice checkmate. This is a, a known checkmate pattern. Luckily your opponent didn't know it or didn't see it. Okay, so instead he played queen to e2. Bishop e7. Queen to e5, e4. Knight takes f3 is a good move because you now weaken the white king side. He has to take back with the pawn. Queen d7 attacking the pawn on h3, that's good. King h2, castle long, and now I like black's position. Now you've done fine out of the opening, because your king has castled, and uh, you've weakened the white king, and you seem to have attacking chances here on the king side. Bishop to e3, Inst interesting consequence of this move is that the white queen can't go back onto the, on the e-file now, because the bishop is blocking him, and you could actually exploit that now by playing a move like d5 this white queen has got a problem. He can't come to this diagonal at all due to the pin. And pretty much the only square where the queen can go is to go to d4. And now you can add more pressure on white by either playing a move like c5 or even maybe bishop to f6. That would be a nice way to add pressure on white. Okay, you played the move rook to e8 Threatening a discovery on the queen is also a strong move. Bishop takes b6 is a strategic error from white. The reason I say it's a strategic error is because white need this bishop to protect these white these dark squares near his king. And also this knight didn't do much to put pressure on white. So white is actually taking a good defender and exchanging it for a piece that didn't put any pressure on him. You should be glad to see a move like bishop takes b6. A takes queen to a4. Okay, so white's idea is clear here. He wants to exchange queens. And he does that by threatening checkmate. Now, in this situation, you want to avoid the queen exchange. The reason why you want to avoid the queen exchange is because you are the attacking side. And when you are the attacking side, then you should try to keep as many pieces on the board as possible. 
because you want to use your pieces to add pressure on your opponent. So in this case you don't want to do the queen exchange. But on the other hand white is also threatening queen a8 checkmate. So uh, the way to deal with that is to play c6. You avoid the queen exchange and also queen a8 is not a problem because of king c7. Right, okay, so you did exchange the queens, which is not a tactical error, but it was a strategic mistake. Because now white doesn't have to worry so much about the pressure on his king anymore. Knight c3, bishop f6, knight e4, okay, knight e4, seems like it leaves the pawn on b2 unprotected. You take a pawn, rook b1. And you can come back with check, bishop e5 check, which gives you time to play b5 so that white can't take the pawn on b6 with his rook. And after bishop to b3, pawn to d5, this is all very good. And particularly this bishop is becoming a weak piece because the black pawns control all the squares where the white bishop would want to have an effect. Knight g5 looks a bit optimistic because it seems the knight is trapped. c6, pretty much he has to give up his knight. Rook e1, rook h6. Rook h6 is a very good move. You threaten to come in here, activating your rook via g6. That's good. d4 doesn't make much sense because you can simply capture it. And I see you didn't capture it. You actually played the move f5, losing your bishop. And I understand why you played f5. You thought that the bishop was pinned to the white rook, but you missed that this bishop was actually protecting it. So uh, keep an eye out for this, especially these backward moves, sometimes easy to miss. So your rook was actually protected by the bishop. So you didn't need to give up your bishop here. Okay, but you didn't see that, so that's why you lost the bishop. And now things are a little bit difficult again. Rook e6. I think you played this move because you were a little bit shocked about lo just losing your bishop again and disappointed. But maybe stronger than rook e6 would be rook g6. Go on the attack again after king h2, bishop takes f3. This looks stronger. But okay, rook to e6, c3. White could have done better than that. He should have played f4. And then this pawn becomes a really a big problem to you. So white didn't play that. White played c3 giving you a chance to take that pawn on e5 before it becomes a problem. Exchanging rooks. Bishop d1. g5. f4, interesting move. Rook e1, nice counter. Pinning his bishop. And that's a mistake, a tactical mistake. Why shouldn't take your pawn because now you're just losing, now you're just losing a piece. You can just now take the bishop. He should have maybe, what could he do? He could maybe play bishop c2. Maybe that would be much better for white. At least he doesn't lose a piece. Because this move loses a piece. And now you should be able to win this game. If you can ensure that the white pawns don't progress too much. And the way to deal with that is to just bring your king. And make sure the kings don't, that the pawns don't make progress. King g3, you should now play king d7. Instead you played f4, which I think was a quite a big mistake also. Because that f pawn of yours would help to slow down white's pawns. But now white is coming at a force, and now it's becoming difficult to defend. Especially if you were maybe under time trouble yet. It was a 10 minute game, so maybe at this stage you were already running low on time. Rook e4 check. King f5. Okay, black should still be able to win this quite comfortably. The trick is just to get your king in here as quick as possible. Get your king here to try to stop the advance of the pawns. And then use your rook and bishop to uh, 
to try win those pawns. Rook e1, king f3, rook f1, king g7, king d7, g6, rook g1, king h7, and bishop c2 is an unfortunate error that ends the game now because watch just taking your rook right so you didn't see that pin sometimes what happens is you see a target like in this case you saw the g6 pawn and uh, you saw you can pin the pawn and add the rook pr pressure with the rook and sometimes one gets excited about seeing how you can put pressure on the target and then you forget about the consequence of your move so keep that in mind you need to think about the consequence of your move before you actually make that move right so i hope you uh, enjoyed this review and that you learn something from it and uh, i'll see you again soon cheers